Hello again, everyone. Kevin Carpenter here with Matouche, and we're going to talk about his class he's got coming up for CppCon 2024. Matouche is a principal software engineer and security champion with over 20 years of experience, a trainer with over 10 years of C++ teaching experience, consultant, conference speaker, evangelist. I kind of like that word when you're talking C++. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, contributor to the ISO committee, you know, Matush loves modern C++, code performance, low latency. I mean, I'm sure there's a whole bunch more there that I missed, but I think that covers a bunch of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that's me. Yeah. It's <laughs> Hello again, Kevin and everyone. It's good to be there again. And I cannot wait for the, for the CVCon. It's going to be great this year. So speaking of CVPCon, do you have some favorite talks you're looking forward to or speakers? Uh, I don't know how much time you have for me to talk about them because CPCon <laughs> is a huge conference, right? It's just it's five full days of trainings, uh, five, five, five full days of, of talks, four days of trainings. Uh, we have, I think, like five different uh, streams on the conference. So yeah. there will be plenty of talks. It's actually hard to find the favorite one. I'm really lo looking forward for sure for the talks about uh, new C++ 26 features. So mostly... Yep. Um, things like reflection. Okay. I'm really looking forward to see what people are able or want to do with this feature because it's going to be amazing uh, and opens the door for many new possibilities and 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 solutions to our to our programming. And you know, yeah. Oh no, I was gonna say, and, and I hope I pronounce his name right, but David, um, who I think is our closing keynote, is supposed to be talking about that too. So that'll be exciting to see. So you have to stay through the whole conference, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the help will probably start with that. Then we'll have talks by, by many people, including Andre Alexandrescu. And, and yeah, David Vanderwood is, is, is a champion of, of, of reflection. So I'm really looking forward to those. That's cool. So, yeah. And besides that, there are plenty of other uh, things uh, that, that I would like to see. Uh, there will be some probably improvements in the uh, com common package specification that is really important mm -hmm. for, for, for package sharing. Uh, Diego okay. is providing a talk about this. Uh, there will be a really great, probably low detailed talk by Khalil about the C++ exceptions. I've yep. seen some of his talks. I'm really into looking what he's uh, improved or, or, or basically what he achieved in last in last months because this is amazing what he does. We always believe that exceptions are not for embedded devices because they are slow, because they are big in terms of the of the uh, code size and binary size. But he proves that actually it can be the opposite. So it's really, really interesting stuff. And yeah, there are plenty his, of other talks as well that I would like yeah. to attend. I was going to say his talk, uh, I saw a preview of that at ACCU, which was really interesting. So, And he said that he's even gotten more performance out of it since, since then. So that'll be really cool to see, that's for sure. Yeah, as a member of a committee, I'm not often get, being lost during the talk, but I've been lost like three times at least during the Khalil's talk. <laughs> it's so <laughs> intense and so many bits there, but, but it's so interesting to see what we can do when you actually spend some time on it. So on performance, if people want to learn about performance through concurrency, they should come see your class and take your class. You got a pre-class, right? Structured concurrency in C++ this year, correct? Yes, sure. Uh, this is a really great topic. Uh, uh, there will be also plenty of talks about it during the conference. So if you actually want to understand the talks better from Andreas, Ayan, Dmitry, Michael Case and others, uh, it would be great to actually attend the, the, the workshop before so you know actually what they are going to talk about. And, and, and this is not only about the performance, it's about making your code easier to reason about, easier to write uh, and easier to maintain. Because writing asynchronous code is inherently hard, yeah. right? And uh, doing this with callbacks in a traditional way or std future, or even if you have .den extensions, it's still really, really hard to, to write, reason about, uh, maintain, and then debug when needed. Uh, with providing a structure to it, with, with using coroutines, with using senders receivers, uh, the, the execution framework that was actually accepted to C++26, on the last committee meeting, so it's the part is going to be the part of the upcoming standard. Yeah, we can do much, much better, and uh, plenty of companies are using this already in production. So this is not something that is like unproven, something that is going to change uh, in, a, in a in a in a huge way, or something that is not going to last. Uh, it's going to be a part of the standard. Uh, there is a, the production experience with that. Uh, for example, uh, Ayan 
will provide a talk how they are using this in meta uh, mm -hmm. in many of the of, of the products and they claim that it actually made the debugging of async code much easier for them so it's really interesting to to see what we can do with those so you know i haven't you know i've seen lots of talks on coroutines and i understand a bit about how that is going to help change concurrency the senders and receivers when i was at c++ now i missed the talk but in in your mind do these two items really change how we're going to do concurrency going forward in the future? Yes, sure. Uh, it's uh, it's it's changing things a lot, but maybe it's even not only about the concurrency. It's about doing asynchronous stuff in a more efficient way, mm -hmm. um, because it's hard to say what they are doing about concurrency. You, for example, may work with some uh, OS-based kernel utilities or maybe AZ library, whatever. You are still single-threaded application but right. using those things as an asynchronous uh, operations you are doing, right? And still you want to make them efficient, like wait for the message, then reply to the, to, to the message and so on. Uh, you may still work on one single thread, so it's not strictly about concurrency, but do it in an efficient way, easy to manage in a structured way, uh, how to do it correctly. And easier to reason about too, like you were saying, correct? Yes, because you basically write synchronous code and it just yeah. works asynchronously. So you have everything in one place, Everything uh, works as it should work. For example, lifetime, uh, every AI, and all other stuff just work. You don't have to think about it. Allocate dynamically stuff on the on the heap in order to to make things uh, live enough for the callback to, to to use it again. That sounds so. I haven't. You know, I'm still stuck using atomics and threads in some of the code that I have, and so you know, that sounds like what I really want to modernize our code to. <laughs> Yeah, that's a huge step forward with those utilities comparing to the, let's say, basic primitive uh, utilities we have in the standard from C11 and then a few from C20 as well, because we have got plenty of additions in C20 as well, but still they are really, really low level stuff. And this is how high level things, uh, how you want to write your code. And basically, uh, we should find this new paradigm and, and learn it uh, because it's something totally different. And if you are not going to basically to um, to think about it and, and, and reason about it, maybe attend my, my workshop or basically read about this by yourself before the conference, you may be a bit lost during those talks I mentioned mm -hmm. uh, because I'm not sure if they will have enough time to provide the intro to the subject before they will start talking about bits they actually care about. You know, it's interesting you say that because that's where, you know, I think the longest uh, co-routine talk I saw, Phil Nash gave one at C++ Now a couple of years ago, where, or two years ago, I think it was, yeah, um, that was on co-routines, but it's like to try to fit co-routines into an hour um, without having the background, like you're saying, is, yeah. So come take Mat Matusha's class on concurrency and get all the new great stuff. And then you're also doing a talk on your units library, correct? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Before we talk about units, I just want to mention one more thing. Uh, yeah. This is not just a training, a class. Uh, it is a hands-on workshop, right? Okay. So you will write a lot of code because I believe that you are learning by doing, not by just just seeing things on the on, on the slides, right? So this is not just yet another talk about about coroutines or sendless receivers, uh, and and it's hard to learn it if you are will not implement anything by yourself. But actually, yeah. after the training, when you actually spend the entire day writing your task uh, class template by yourself, you will know how things work. So I can assure you that. You know, you're, you're right, Matush, and I'm sorry. I should have actually hit you up on that because we've talked before, and it's like I know that you do, you know, when you have the different trainers that we know in the C++ community, it's like you do have some that are more just, you know, they're going to go over slides, but that is not how you run your trainings. That is absolutely for certain. You're very hands-on, um, which I think is excellent because that's how I would learn best. Yeah, it may take a bit more time. It may be a bit more challenging for everyone, but I hope we like challenges. <laughs> and this is how we <laughs> learn, right? Yeah. Uh, I've seen so many people understanding the code on the slides and not being able to write a simple template by themselves because yes. their fingers don't know how to type code. Yep. And, and, and this is the case here as well. Uh, Something looks really simple on a on a, on a slide or on the or, or or in the in the editor, but if you try to do something by yourself, it turns that, that it's a bit tricky and and it's yeah. start, and it's hard to start with. That's why you have yeah. to train it. You have to you have to basically do it by yourself, and that's what yeah. you're going to do for for the two days of this training at CPCon. 
That's cool. Yeah, because that's where I'm like, you know, watching a video on YouTube about brain surgery does not make me a brain surgeon. <laughs> Until you actually do the task, you you haven't really learned it. Yeah, and that works in many, many different fields. Like I provided a post on LinkedIn lately about my experience with sailing because I attended the, the, the World Championships in sailing. Yeah. And I've seen so many different races. I can point at every mistake in those in those videos. But being on the water by myself, <laughs> I had so many stupid mistakes there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So your units library, you've been making progress on this for a while. How is that going? Because you've got to talk this year on it too. Yeah, my units library. Uh it's the I think seven years of 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 of, of my of my work on this library right now. Uh, yeah, it's progressing really nicely, uh, both on with the code and also through the committee. Yeah, uh, uh, we hope to be able to standardize it as part of C plus plus twenty nine. Uh, at least, at, at least we are we are progressing into this into this timeline for now. Uh, and we made a lot of new changes to the library with the two point zero version and, and the next following versions. So if you didn't see my previous talks about it, you you don't know what's actually there uh, in the 2.0 version, you are welcome to come to this talk. And this talk will be not only about the library itself, but it will tell you uh, or show you how we make typical issues in our code bases and how we can fix that with the library because units are inherent, inherently hard subject. It's not only about the code, C++ or whatever, it's hard to communicate units even outside of coding in the, in the daily life, right? There were yeah. so many mistakes, so many accidents, because someone confused like gallons with, with liters or miles with, with, with kilometers or whatsoever, right? Columbus yeah. survived or actually uh, discovered America only because he made a mistake. <laughs> if he didn't make a mistake in his calculations with the, with the units of length, he would probably, will never probably hear about, this, about Columbus because he will suffer and, 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 and die on the water with <laughs> no food and water to drink. Yeah, I, I love some of your examples that you've given in your previous talks about where, you know, units being mis, you know, uh, the, the bridge example, which I can't remember, it was Germany and Switzerland. Yeah. Do, do I have that right? Yeah, exactly. Where they were off a little bit on each side because of, you know, miscalculation in the units. So, um, yeah, exactly. But but actually, they were actually aware about uh, of this issue that, that the mean sea level on, in both countries is calculated differently, but they forgot engineers forgot which side is higher, which side is lower. So actually they provided the delta on the wrong side of the of the bridge. So actually they ended up with two times the difference rather than the than the correct altitude. Well I you know I like the units library. It's been really kind of interesting. I only used it in you know practice stuff. Um, but I think the thing that I like about it when I think of C is the strong typing, the conversions and so it's really cool to hear that it's making its progress to becoming standard. Yeah, I think that C++ is the only language that allows us to be so efficient in this library. By efficiency, I mean the uh, compile time performance, uh, runtime performance, I mean, and, and also, uh, of course, um, the code size, right? Yeah. If I compare the, the, the solution to the solution in other languages, they are less safe uh, at compile time. Uh, because some of those checks are done at runtime, not at compile time. And also, the code size is so big in things like Python or Java. Uh, oh, they yeah. just well much, much bigger than just int or float or double you're using inside. Yeah. Uh, when you start using those abstractions. And even Python says, if you care about performance, probably you should use the raw values instead of this library, because otherwise you will suffer, suffer right? But please <laughs> mind that you will lose all of the safety when you are doing that. Yeah. So, so this is the approach from other languages, right? And even you talk about languages that are maybe more performant, like like, like the comp compilation compiled uh, programs. Still, I think that the syntax that we can achieve with C++ is the best out there. Yeah. With with any other solutions, generics or whatsoever, in different languages, you will not be able to get this nice syntax as we have right now in C++ 20 uh, features. When you can pass a non tight template parameter as a class object to a template, it allows us so many new possibilities. And the syntax is so nice that I didn't, didn't see this in any other programming language that I analyzed. That's very cool. Well, listen, for everybody that's watching, you want to come see Matt and 
check out his concurrency class. There's still time to sign up and get tickets for that as well as for the conference. And then whether you come to the class or not, you need to come check out his units library talk. And Matt, thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you at, uh, in Aurora here in a 25 days at right now. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was nice um, being here and yeah, see you soon again. <laughs> Bye-bye.